Good evening. Welcome to episode four of Blue Connections 2020. My name is Donna Ozarko, and I'm the manager of officials and publications for Softball Canada. And I'm Jeff Whipple, national director of umpires for Softball Canada. We're so excited you're still able to join us on this new journey. Blue Connections 2020 is designed to bring umpires together virtually to learn from some of our country's leading officials. These webinars will focus on basic techniques and expectations for officials and will reference best practices on mechanics, game management, and fitness from both the WBSC and Softball Canada. And just a reminder that all sessions will be recorded and available on our Softball Canada Umpire YouTube channel and Facebook pages. And if you have any questions for our presenters, you can leave them in the chat section and we will pass the questions on to our presenters in the end. You only get one chance to make a first impression. We often judge a book by its cover. You've heard those sayings. Tonight, we are pleased to present the fourth episode in the series as two of Canada's leading officials talk about some of the most important keys to presenting yourself professionally. Matt Whipple is a multi-sport official and former professional umpire with MILB. He split his professional career between the Gulf Coast League and the New York Penn League, earning a playoff assignment in 2017 and an all-star game assignment in 2018. Matt is currently a student at the University of New Brunswick and spends his winter refereeing collegiate basketball. And Valerie Pellick has started umpiring after retiring from catching and moving back from overseas in 2010. She has worked with Team Manitoba at numerous Canadian Canada Games as a manager and a mission staff. Val obtained her Level 5 umpire certification in 2017. She is a local assigner and league UIC in Winnipeg and is active in clinic instruction and umpire evaluation throughout the season. She will also be one of the organizers for Blue Convention 2022 in Winnipeg. Mark your calendars for that, you guys. <laughs> Al is, <laughs> is a certified athletic therapist and an instructor in the Department of Kinesiology and Applied Health at the University of Winnipeg. She is currently a stay-at-home mom while the daycare is closed during this pandemic. Good. And welcome, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks. Glad to be here. Okay, you're on. <laughs> All right. So again, I've been really enjoying these uh, this web series every Sunday night. I, I mark it down on my calendar. And uh, when Val and I were chatting about it, we've kind of noticed this common uh, theme that keeps coming up. And it's uh, to control what you can control. And I love that idea because there are hundreds of things that happen throughout the course of either a tournament or a game that we don't have any control over. So controlling those variables um, is really important. It's really important that we get those right and how we look is something that we have complete control over. So where does it start? Um, we've all heard the, the importance of a first impression uh, and being able to identify when those first impressions may happen is really important. It's easy to fall into the trap that our first impressions start at the plate meeting and our job is done with the last out. Um, but unfortunately, what happens outside of the lines is also just as important as what happens between them. This is one I learned the hard way and I'll share a little story here. Um, I was in the New York Penn League and I was working in Staten Island. So there was another crew in Brooklyn and we were gonna meet up um, at this famous umpire watering hole in Manhattan called Foley's. Uh, I just finished a three hour plate job and we're in the locker room getting ready. Uh, my partner puts on a nice shirt and jeans and I opt for the ever so classy uh, decision of wearing athletic shorts and a t-shirt. Um, so we meet up at Foley's, we're watching the Yankees game on TV and about two hours after that game ends, four guys walk in and it's the crew that was working there. And we introduce ourselves, invite them over. And then 20 minutes passes and another four guys walk in. And this is the replay crew. So we're sitting at this table with eight big league umpires and us four minor leaguers. 
11 of the 12 umpires are wearing collared shirts and long pants. One guy doesn't look like a professional at all. Um, I was actually pretty embarrassed. I didn't mention this, um, but I, I learned a lot. I had a lot of fun that night, but I, I did learn a couple things. And one thing that stood out was this importance of a first impression. Um, and I kind of decided that if I was ever going to be recognized as an umpire, uh, and if there was a chance for me to be recognized off the field as an umpire, I had to look the part. I had to dress professionally. Now, this applies at any tournament, Canadian championships, uh, for example. If you're kicking it around the field, maybe be aware of who's watching you. They all know that you're an umpire, so dress like it. Or at the pre-tournament meeting. That's another spot where you can make a great first impression. This picture is actually from my league meeting in 2017. Uh, we were told to dress business casual and we all overdressed, um, but that's the importance of a first impression. We didn't want to get that wrong. So keep in mind that while you're an umpire off the field, you're not only representing yourself or your province or an organization, you're also representing other umpires. So take pride in that and really try and portray us uh, in a professional light. So let's talk about the crew. Look at our crew here with three fine officials. Um, there are two great ways to, uh, to make your crew look good. Um, first of all, everyone should match. Uh, whether you have to coordinate this before the game or just bring all your uniforms, really make sure that everyone's wearing the same color shirt, same color pants, there's no excuse to not do that. And jackets. If one base umpire is going to wear a jacket, then let's make sure all base umpires are wearing a jacket. Or if your plate umpire is going to wear a jacket, then unfortunately everyone's stuck wearing a jacket. So hopefully it's not too hot that night. And wear the right stuff. So make sure that the uniform you're wearing is for the organization that you're working for. Uh, this is something that I got in trouble for, I guess. Um, when I came home, I'd given away all my umpire uniforms. So I only had my minor league stuff and I would wear it to games. Um, but what would happen is after the next crew that came on, players would be like, well, why don't we get the professional umpire? So be aware of this. If you work WBSC or ISC and you're working a Softball Canada event, then make sure you're wearing Softball Canada stuff. Um, you don't wanna get the next crew in kind of a tough situation to start their game. So I'll hand this over to Val. Okay, thanks Matt. Um, so I just have a few points here about getting the fit of your uniforms right. Um, no matter whether you're male, female, um, everyone has different body types. And quite often buying something off the rack doesn't always work when we're looking to put on a professional looking uniform. Um, if you are somebody who's lost a lot of weight over the off season, if you've gained weight, if your body shape has changed, it's really important that you adjust from year to year and you look at replacing things, um, getting things tailored, maybe trading with someone, whatever you need to do, but it's going to take away from the professional image you're trying to project if you know, you're wearing a shirt that's two sizes too big for you. Um, you also have to know when to bring in the professionals, uh, a professional in this case being a tailor. Um, maybe some of you out there have some tailoring skills and you can hem pants, you can take shirts and pants in. Um, I am jealous of you, I do not have those skills. Um, and I resisted finding these professionals for a long time. I think I was just, I don't know, being a cheapskate probably. Um, so being a female, um, the pants are typically an, an issue for most female umpires. Um, so I do have a story, again, learning things the hard way. Um, I was at uh, Canadian Championships, I think it was U19, um, where I got my level four. And I was wearing my gray pants, hating them as I usually do, um, because I never took the time to really get them tailored and had a debrief with my DUIC after the game. And she she kind of mentioned just that they didn't fit quite right kind of around my hips in the pocket area, something super minor. 
Um, and I knew they didn't fit right, um, but what was I gonna do? I got them done up and that was great. Um, she wasn't trying to embarrass me at all, um, but it really just kind of uh, showed me that if I wanted to move to the next level, things as small as pants fitting you perfectly and taking the time to get them tailored, that was something that was gonna be really important going forward. You also have to think about what the focus will be in your game. If you were just, um, you know, 20 minutes before hemming your own pants in the, the change room and you've never hemmed pants before, are you gonna be focused on those bangers at first base or calling, you know, close balls and strikes? Or are you going to be thinking about your pants that are coming undone or your your pants that are now too short because you did them yourself so that can then take away from your focus and then what if you're being evaluated that game um, or what if you know you're you're not as sharp as you should be that comes back to having your uniform fit perfectly I do have another story that ties in with this picture. This is not me, but this has happened to me as I'm sure it's happened to a lot of other umpires. Um, again, back when I resisted um, getting a tailor to help me do things, um, I enlisted the help of my granny who used to be a seamstress, but hadn't done that for 40 years. But I thought, well, she knows how to sew. She can fix up my pants. Um, and it wasn't hemming them, it was involve, involving the waist and really changing a lot of things. And they looked great, so I wore them and then I felt the rip during a game. So again, another lesson learned the hard way to get a professional um, involved. And then the last point I have is, yes, we wanna look great on the field. Um, having that great fitting uniform really gives you that professional image but it's also not a fashion show. So you don't wanna cross that line um, in both the Softball Canada and the WBSC manuals. Um, it gives you examples of things you, you should wear and things you shouldn't wear. So you never wanna be noticed for the flashy jewelry you're wearing or um, having your nails painted and, and people asking you about these things or, or noticing them because that's really the last thing an umpire wants, wants to be is noticed. We just wanna be there to do our job um, and get those calls right. Now, part of looking professional um, is also how your equipment plays in. And even though you can't see a lot of your equipment because it's under your uniform, um, it does play a role in looking professional. So your equipment has to fit you right in order to protect you. Um, if you have equipment and you can't remember when you got it or who you got it from, if it's cracked or damaged in any way, um, you need to think about replacing it. And it also needs to fit you properly. So if you have a chest protector that's way too big or way too small underneath your uniform shirt, that can take away from that professional image that you're trying to project and it may or may not actually protect you. And then you also wanna think about just, if you have equipment that isn't comfortable, um, just like with, with your uniform, if you've tried to alter things yourself, um, you know, maybe you're wearing a chest protector and you know that it doesn't fit you right and there's a gap at the front of the shoulder and, and you've been hit there before and it really hurts on a foul tip. Um, then your mind's going to be on that during the game. Maybe you adjust your mechanics um, because you're trying to avoid getting hit in a certain position where you don't have that protection. And again, it can affect the job you're out there to do and it can affect your evaluations um, that you might be receiving that game. Okay, next one, please, Matt. And then finally, some tips for female umpires, although uh, these aren't all just tips for females. It can be for anyone, really. Um, but I'll start with men's clothing just isn't always a good match for a female body. And I'm sure there's some men out there and the men's clothing isn't a good match for the men. So it's like what I said before, um, off the rack doesn't always work for everyone. Um, so I've talked lots about um, getting the help of a good tailor already. Um, and it's it sucks because you're paying more money for the, the stuff you've already paid enough money for, but you have to be comfortable and look great while you're, you're umpiring. You can also look south of the border at some different websites that stock umpire specific clothing. So uh, Umpatire is a popular one. Uh, ASA Softball also has 
um, umpire clothing, and both of those have female specific um, clothes. Um, and I know a lot of female umpires who buy their pants off of ump attire. And I would also suggest, uh, really for anyone, but sometimes you can find some clothes to wear for umpiring when you're not umpiring at a Canadian championship or provincials or, or an important tournament. Uh, if you're just doing house league ball and you're doing it by yourself and it's U10B and you're just out there um, on your own, then sometimes stores like Marks will have some really good pants that you can wear. I have bought umpire pants there before that are the right color. Uh, you can even look at Walmart. Um, you never know where you're going to find um, clothes that will do the job for umpiring when we don't need um, our branded clothes. Um, so a weeknight, um, those can be great. I would also suggest if you're not already part of this and you are a female, this group is closed to men. Men are not allowed in the Women in Blue Facebook group. Um, it's a pretty big community across North America, and we might even have some members who are um, outside of um, Canada and the US. Um, but it quite, uh, quite often some of the discussions are about uh, uniforms and equipment, um, how they fit, if anyone has suggestions. I know that uh, plate shoes comes up quite often, uh, finding the, uh, ones that fit smaller feet, for example. So that can be a really great way to network. And I would also encourage you to reach out to some other umpires that you've worked with in the past um, on your crews, other females, or if, if you're a man, um, reach out to some of the other guys that you know um, and just ask them uh, what they wear and, and what they've had success with. Um, and that might lead you in some other directions that you hadn't thought of before. And then finally, I think it's um, anyone can really get creative with their equipment. So you don't want to do anything that will take away from how it's fitting underneath your uniform. You don't want to take away from the protection that it's offering you. But if you need to add some extra padding, um, if you need to change the con configuration of the straps on your chest protector or your shin pads, um, go ahead and give it a try. Um, maybe that will be the solution you're looking for. Um, you'll be more comfortable and then you'll be able to um, act more professionally and not have just those those lingering little things um, on your mind while you're working a game. Okay, back to you, Matt. All right. So to finish us off, I'm going to give some, we'll call them pro tips for lack of a better word. Uh, so when you're working, say, at a Canadian championship or even a world championship or professional um, level, there, everyone's being judged um, on how you look and the margin that you're being separated by other umpires gets smaller and smaller the higher you work. So these are things that I've implemented in my game, things that were kind of passed down to me. Um, they might not work for everyone, but if something here uh, seems like it might work for you, uh, I would suggest giving it a try. So the first one, uh, we've all been to a game it's 35 degrees and the plate umpire's shirt is coming untucked and it looks really bad. So we have to find a way to keep our shirt tucked in. Some people will tuck it into their tights. Um, others wear flex belts. Um, for me personally, I use uh, shirt stays, which there's a picture of right here. Uh, they attach to the bottom of your shirt and they loop around your foot. Uh, so I wear those on the bases and on the plate, I wear these things called plate pros. They're the same idea, except they clip onto the top of your shin pads. Uh, my roommate from umpire school actually invented the plate pro. So here's a little shout out to Paul. Um, but whatever you, whatever works for you, you just have to find some way to keep it tucked in and nice and crisp through the full game. So pockets, uh, this is like my number one tip that I give umpires. So shirt pockets on the plate are great. You put your lineup card in there, you, you put your pen in there, um, but on the bases, they should be empty. There's no reason to have anything in there. So when I'm getting my shirts tailored because nothing comes fitting me, uh, I spend a couple extra dollars and get my seamstress to just take that pocket right off. Um, what it does is it gives a nice sleek appearance, takes away some of the bulk from the front of your shirt. Uh, and major league guys don't have shirts, uh, shirt pockets either. So why not learn from the best? So give that a try. Hats. So there are two types of hats uh, generally being sold. There's a four stitch and a six stitch. 
the four stitch is labeled as a plate hat and the six stitch is labeled as a base hat. Now the idea is that the four stitch is easier to maneuver with the mask and the six stitch looks better without a mask. So why not just wear the one that looks the best without the mask? Because while you are working your game, you have to take that thing off. So a lot of professional umpires, myself included, have just opted to wear six stitch everywhere. Um, I think it gives a really good image uh, when you are chasing down that, that fly ball. So consider trying that, those, uh, those four and six stitch for plate and base, they're, they're not strict. Um, I will say, do not wear a four stitch on the plate unless you are Joe West and have a million years of service. Uh, I don't think the base hat or the plate hat on the base looks the best. So I got two more here, uh, ball bags. Softball Canada has the option of one or two ball bags. Uh, I used to wear two out of convenience. I've switched to one. Uh, so a little context here, I am about five, eight and a half uh, and 130 pounds. So I'm built kind of like a rake. And I was trying to find a way to make myself look bigger. So you would think two ball bags makes you look bigger. One of my supervisors actually told me that one ball bag will give you extra height. So having that full exposed side um, from the center field camera and uh, the, the press box angle, uh, it will make you look taller. So I tried it. Uh, the next morning I was watching my game uh, like I always did and it, it worked. I thought I looked taller. I stacked up better against, uh, against those professional players. So if you're tall and athletic, maybe two ball bags will work for you. If you're built like me and you're short and slim, um, consider trying to use one. And finally, uh, Val touched on this point, and I think it's worth mentioning again. Um, to extend the life of your gear, take care of it, clean it. Uh, after every plate game, Lysol your gear and wash your uniforms and maybe even take it to a dry cleaner every once in a while. But with that said, know when your gear needs to go away and you need to invest in new gear. If you're working your 450th game in your plate hat, you might need to hit home run sports up and order some new stuff. So those are just ways to, those are like five quick tips to kind of make yourself look sharp on the field. That's all we have. So we'll hand it back over to the people in charge. Ha ha, the people, I like that, the people in charge. <laughs> um, <laughs> So just just so you guys know, and, and uh, full disclosure here, those of you may recognize that there are two Whipples on the screen. Matt is my son. And uh, <laughs> one of the greatest joys I've had in my life has been to watch him walk out in a pro field. So um, I would say there was probably a few tears involved. And it was really cool um, to be able to see how great they look and how much time the pro guys put into preparing off the field and, and the kind of, of uh, regimen they have to go through. Who, Matt, how much time would those guys put into uniform prep and getting their uniforms ready, keeping them ready? Uh, I mean, on a daily basis, we were lucky we would have a, a clubby who you could give a couple extra dollars to and he would take care of some of it. But we were always washing our stuff. Uh, we were there about an hour early every day, mm -hmm. hour and a half. Um, and that was just making sure our uniform looked good. I always had a steamer in my in my gear bag to make sure no wrinkles. But yeah. yeah, over the course of like a career though, you're always tailoring. You're always like kind of playing with your image. Right. So a question that came in, what about shoes? Val, what's your trick? Shoes in terms of finding them or keeping well, them? Keeping them between... looking sharp between games. Oh, well, the last pair of plate shoes that I bought, um, they had that um, shiny type finish on them, like the patent type finish, the New Balance ones, I think. Um, right. I found that really helped and I take some uh, baby wipes now and I just wipe them down that way. Um, I used to get the polish out mainly at Canadians. Um, 
because that's that's when you do it. But I think it's important um, during league games during the week uh, to show up with shoes that aren't covered in dust. So uh, this last pair I bought, they've been a real winner, I think. Just they're so easy to, to wipe down. Right. What, what model are they, Val? Oh, I haven't put them on yet this year. Um, I think they're the New Balance ones. Uh, and right. they're only a couple years old, just from Home Run Sports. Right. Matt, what are you? What were you wearing? For shoes, uh, yeah. just the New Balance, the the white and black, the white sole. Um, so with the on, with the with the white sole, is there any particular way, any particular hints about keeping those clean? I think it's just about cleaning them after every use, uh, not letting that dirt really build up and set in. Um, but I didn't use anything special, just water and some elbow grease. Yeah. And I think it's important to build that into your post-game routine, like when Tanya was talking about uh, last week, I think, uh, how she has her rituals that she does uh, every week um, and, you know, puts her stuff back a certain way. I think incorporating that maintenance as part of that um, can really help you get in the habit and not let these little things slip. Cool. I think there's actually a question here. There we go. Now I can see there's one more. Uh, it says, thank you to Softball Canada for starting wearing white shoes. This is Stuart. Uh, <laughs> so he's just saying thanks. Uh, but, but yeah, I think the, the white shoes will be will be a hit with uh, with some of our umpires. So um, it's, uh, it's I find I just think it's got a sleeker and more professional look. So cool. Well, thank you guys for sharing your time this week. This has been really good. I think it was uh, a really uh, you know, it, it gave us uh, and umpires out there some really interesting uh, pieces to look at uh, and ideas uh, to get ready for the season. And hopefully we're all on the season. Val, you're on the season this week. Yeah. Better go try on those shoes and get, get this uniform shoes. in order. <laughs> right. So Manitoba yeah. is, is going this week. Uh, I don't know Tomorrow, what yeah. the rest of the country. And Matt, what's going on here in NB? Any games going on? No, practice is next week, though, so... We're on the field, which I think is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. So there's lots of, uh, yeah, there's a few questions in here. Uh, maybe, let me see if I can get them to spread out. They're, they're, I can't really pull them down. No, it's crazy. Yeah, it is, it is. Oh, here we go. Um, excellent comment about investing in new gear when necessary. How do you broach that as a UIC or DUIC? So if you're leaving... Uh, if you're leading a tournament and if you're a UIC or DUIC, uh, how do you tell people nicely that their gear might not be up to standard? I, th I think for myself, I would try and tie in a safety component to it um, and, and, you know, say it might not protect you when you need it to. So it might be time for an upgrade and that that way they might see that. Uh, you know, I'm not attacking them and their gear, but I want um, them to protect themselves. And and their hats. hats. I've had the I've had the hat comment before. Just I've yeah. had hats that are kind of faded, and it, it's noticeable. Um, it just takes a, that little bit away from from your prof professional image, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you crease your hats, Matt? I do. Um, it. I found it was a nice way to kind of separate myself from the players. The players didn't crease their hats, so I don't want to be a player. So, okay. Crease mine. Yeah. Do you crease yours, Val? Does that just mean like curving it? Like, well, that, what does that, that mean? It, it puts that crease over the top of it. So oh. The pro ones, yeah. Oh, I never thought no. about that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Yeah. I, you know, the old guys used to. It was funny because when I first started, creasing your hats was very, very popular. And now we've kind of got sort of into the off the shelf uh, regular look. So. But uh, you know, it, I like creasing. I think it looks it looks pretty sharp. Gives you, like Matt said, it looks like a, looking a little different from the players. So. Well, you just taught me something really new there. I didn't know about. That. <laughs> You're gonna go home and crease your your hats, Donna. Every, everybody. I, I know about the and the ponytail holder, but that's yeah. about it. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, thank you so much again for uh, taking your time to uh, to share with us tonight, and we very much appreciate it. No problem. It was fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, just a reminder that that completes episode four of Blue Connections 2020. 
Thanks to Val and Matt for sharing their time and expertise. And a special thanks goes out to level four, five umpire, Darren Jerwar, for his work as co-producer on this series. And in fact, Darren's going to take center stage next week. So join us next week with Darren and Scott McLaren as they explore how to manage yourself mentally before, during, and after the game. And I want to thank you both, Matt and Val. This is awesome again. You just taught me a bunch of stuff. And uh, just a reminder that all episodes of Blue Connections 2020 are available later on the Softball Canada Umpire YouTube channel and Facebook. So we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.